DSP tries it. What is going on everyone? Phil here and welcome to a new edition of DSP Tries It. Boy, is this one different than usual, right? Because almost every single episode that I've ever done of DSP Tries It in the past several years has been me going out and grabbing some kind of fast food or something. Um, this one is not. In this case, I'm trying something that I didn't even know about. My viewers told me about it. They said they had seen ads for this on TV and had seen it at their grocery stores and were interested in seeing me try it out. It is the new DiGiorno Crispy Pan Pizza. Now, I actually really like DiGiorno Pizza. If I ever make a homemade pizza, nine times out of ten, it's a DiGiorno. I really like the rising crust variety in particular. Um, and so this is right up my alley. Now, I'm going to be honest with everyone, this is very expensive. This pizza costs around nine dollars where I live. I'm not sure if it'll be cheaper anywhere else uh, in the country of the United States, but for me it's nine U.S. dollars, all right? Uh, but the trade-off here, take a look at the weight. It's a good pound, almost two pounds of pizza. This is a ton of food. This is something when you make it, it's going to be several meals for one person or, you know, at least serve two to three people uh, with an initial serving. So it's not a pizza that you're going to eat right away. It's, it's quite big. Just to give you some perspective, this is my hand. So it's actually the size of one, two, three of my entire hand. Huge. Um, and honestly, the, the regular DiGiorno pizzas actually weigh way less than that. I believe that most of them weigh about a pound. So this is pretty damn good and it's a lot of food. Well, what varieties does it come in? I saw a pepperoni and I saw a supreme. I think there was a third one. It might have been meat lovers, I'm not sure. But I wanted to go with supreme to get a good variety of toppings on there. Look, you're gonna get onions, you're gonna get green peppers, you're gonna get uh, pepperoni, you're gonna get, looks like a little bit of sausage right there, right? Olives, you're gonna get a lot of stuff on top of your pizza. So the way it works is that you bake it in your oven, okay? And this particular one actually comes with a pan already. I'm assuming it's just a cardboard pan. And you put that directly onto your oven rack to cook this pizza. So let's take a look at the instructions to try to figure this out. It actually says, preheat to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Remove film from the pan. Place pan directly on the center oven. All right, so let's, let's get the oven heated because I believe that takes a while, actually. All right. All right, so six minute countdown to get it to, to that much. So it wants me to take the pizza out, remove the film, place it on the wrap, bake for 24 to 26 minutes. Enjoy. For best results, remove pan from the oven and place onto a heat resistant cutting board or baking sheet. That's what I have right here, okay? Let's see, in three to five minutes, then remove pizza from the pan with a spatula before cutting. So what I'll do is I'll grab a spatula and I'll take the pizza out of the pan and put it onto here to chop it up, okay? Uh, let's take a look at what this pizza actually looks like. It's a brand new product, by the way. It's brand new. I've seen ads on TV for it. Intriguing to me that it's something different, you know? Something at home that's different. And maybe you can get at your own grocery store and check out if I like it. I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. I love the regular DiGiorno, like I said, so let's see. Whoa. It is actually, look at that, it is stacked to the top with toppings. Look at that. It's nice, evenly distributed uh, toppings. I have definitely sausage, green pepper, I see olive, I have cheese, pepperoni, so all the things. I'm sure there's uh, onion in there too, but onion's white. Oh, there it is. See, onion's white, so it's hard to see amongst all the cheese. And yes, it is pretty thick, as you can see. A pretty thick pizza. That's about, literally, that's double the thickness, if not even more, of their regular pizza. Their regular pizza has a thick crust that rises, but the actual pizza itself is kind of thin. This is pretty thick, so pretty interesting. It's going to be crispy and airy and good, just like a good pan pizza usually is, or how it's going to turn out. We're going to find out, okay? So, they want me to remove the film completely, it said, right? So I'm going to do that. Let's see here, if I need a knife or not, if I can just get it with my finger. Oh, I was able to get it with my finger. No problem. Let's remove the film. Remove the film, remove the film. There we go. All right. So here's what it looks like without the film. Looks pretty good in my opinion. Um, lift it up again without the film. Cardboard, not surprising that it's a cardboard uh, tray. That's what I expected, all right? Pretty good, and it looks like you'll get about six big pieces, right? You'll cut there, there, and across. So six big pieces, and will it fit on my cutting board? Let's find out. Yes, it looks like once it's done, it'll actually fit perfectly on the cutting board, so I should be able to cut it and get it into the six perfect pieces. Of course, probably for me, I'll eat like two, and then save the rest, maybe this will be a snack, you know, for the rest of the week, every once in a while, grab a piece of pizza out of the fridge and warm it up in the microwave or something like that. Um, all right, so we still got a good three minutes. So in three minutes, I'll pop it in, and then we'll take another look, all right? Cool. Okay, so the oven just beeped. It's 400 degrees. I'm gonna open this sucker up. I'm gonna put the pizza in. See how it sits here on the center rack. Let's see here. And it's pretty solid, so pretty easy to just get right in there. I'm a little worried about getting it out, honestly, because I'm wondering if uh, what's gonna happen when I try to get it out, right? I'm gonna need gloves, I think, to actually get it out of the oven. All right, so let's get it in there. And 
and let's go ahead. It's a 22, 24 to 26 minutes, actually. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to do a round number right between 25. There we go. 25 minute countdown. So in 25 minutes, I will take it out. We'll take a look at it. It's got to sit for a few minutes. Take a look at it and see what it smells like and everything. And then go from there. Um, and we'll see. All right. I'll be back in about 25 minutes. Well, you'll see me instantly, but I'm going to check this out in 25 real time minutes. Okay. Okay, everyone, so I am back. Here's what the pizza looks like out of the oven. It's been out for about maybe five to ten minutes, so it cooled down. Because I wanted to be able to easily get it out and put it down on this cutting board. Um, and it said it would be too hot if I didn't wait. So here we go. What I'm going to do is attempt with this giant spatula that I just happened to own to try to take the pizza out and put it down onto the cutting board. So let me actually put the camera down while I do this. To see, I don't know if I should do it sideways like this. Right, there we go. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Slid right onto there. Well, that's good. That worked out very easily compared to how difficult I thought that could possibly be. It ended up being pretty good. Um, so here it is, and here's the actual, you know, thickness of the crust. It's pretty thick, you know, in comparison to what you would get from a home pizza, even like a, what do they call that? Frozen pizza, like Elio's or any of those. Any, any company that does frozen pizza, usually they don't do it this thick. Look at that edge, right? All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna attempt to cut it. Of course, this is gonna be tough because I'm right-handed. So I have to use my chart, i use my right hand. I'm gonna try to do six pieces, like I said, maybe go, hmm, should I go this way first and then across like that? Probably. Probably a good idea to do the lengthwise first, I'm thinking. Nice crispy sound. That's a good sign. Okay, so there you go. Now, what we could do here is right here and right here make six pieces. And then I'll probably take like a corner piece and a middle piece. Even though they're going to taste the same. I mean, let's face it. But let's go ahead. There we go. And then two more pieces right here. Actually, something to watch me do during DSP tries it besides just eat, right? <laughs> That's the thing. Usually just watch me eat the food. Here, I actually get to cut the pizza. Something different. I'll put that in the sink right now. I don't get sauce and stuff everywhere. Um, you know, it looks pretty good. It looks like a pretty even distribution of, of toppings, even though obviously in a frozen product, you can't guarantee that it's going to be even distribution like you actually could in another product. So here's what I'll do. I'll grab a corner piece like this. And by the way, here, let's see what it looks like as I lift it up. Pretty interesting, right? Pretty thick. It looks doughy, but also airy like it's supposed to, pan pizza, all right? And I'll grab one more. I'll grab, I guess, one of the middle pieces. This will be what I eat for dinner, these two pieces. All right, uh -oh, now this one is kind of mushy on the side. I'm gonna be honest, I think the sauce came off the top and went to the side and made the, the edge a little mushy. There we go. All right, I'm gonna head over to my kitchen table here. So give me a second, I'm gonna stare at my, my friggin' stomach as I do this, because I'm holding the camera in a weird way. <laughs> I'm sure it's very thrilling. There we go, okay. Um. There's not much else to do but taste it, right? And see what it tastes like. So sit down here, got a napkin available. I'm gonna actually take a bite of the corner piece because the corner piece actually looked like it was crispier than the other piece. The other piece looked like it actually got a little soggy on the end because of the sauce. So let's take a look. I'm gonna bite in the middle, then I'll bite the crust. I'll take a bite of each. I said bite the middle first. Mmm. Well, the crust has a buttery flavor to it, okay? It does, a buttery flavor. It's got, um, I got a big bite of peppers and uh, sausage in that bite. So it almost tastes like sausage and pepper grinder because it had the cheese and everything that you expect on it. Pretty good. I want to think about it at the end here and see if the crust here is actually crispy or not. Hmm. I'll be honest, it really wasn't. It was mushy. It looks like all, look at the, here's the crust. It looks like all the crust on this thing is kind of mushy. Like what it looks like to me, what happened, like I said, with this piece. The sauce dripped over the edge, and with the sauce being on the edge as it was being warmed up, it basically made the, what would have been a crispy edge crust mushy. Um, and sadly, that there's maybe an end result, again, of having it being a frozen product versus a fresh product that they just make, because all your ingredients are going to shift and spread out and, you know, move around in a product that's being transported and stuff. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, it tastes good, though. The flavors are good. It's on par with, say, a regular DiGiorno pizza, the difference being it's a lot easier to eat because the crust is heftier. It's e Normal DiGiorno pizza, especially if you get Supreme. <sighs> You try to lift the piece up, half the time it flops over because there's so many, you know, ingredients on top. And like I told you earlier, the crust on a regular DiGiorno pizza is thin versus the crust on this is very thick. So, you know, that being said, um, it's good and it's definitely better crust than regular DiGiorno. Here, I'm going to take a bite of the middle piece now. I'm sure it tastes the same. But again, look, even, I'm having trouble even lifting it because it's so soft on the end. You expect crisp and hard. It's not. It's, it's soggy on the end. So you got to kind of get your fingers under there. See that to give it support before you can give it a bite. Mm -hmm. Mm. See, the thing is, the flavors are good. I like the flavor of DiGiorno sauce. I like the flavor of the cheese, the toppings, and everything. It's good. Let me take one more bite, and then I'm going to give you my verdict on this. Mm. Pretty tasty. Look at my hand. <laughs> In fact, let me go rinse my hand off while I tell you what I think about the pizza. Um, so here's the thing. 
I like the flavor. The flavor's great. You get a little bit of spice, a little bit of heat. It's always like that in the DiGiorno pizza. The you know, cheese is delicious. The sauce tastes good. The toppings usually taste really good. Unlike a lot of other frozen pizzas, a lot of times you get a frozen pizza and the toppings taste like, uh, you know, they don't taste like anything, or they taste like pale versions of themselves. Not with this pizza. A DiGiorno pizza, for whatever reason, whatever they do, tastes really freaking good, all right? Um, so that being said, pretty good, okay? Um, pretty tasty. And I like it. But I have some criticisms. Number one, it looks crispy, but it's not like it's sog. I'm just touching it. Look, it's supposed to be hard and crispy on the edges. It's not. It's soggy. And keep in mind, I did exactly what the instructions said. Put it on that meal rack, or middle, uh, middle rack, excuse me, like you saw. Left it in the pan for about five minutes. Took it right out, cut it. I didn't under or overcook it. I cooked it for 25 minutes, which is right in the time frame they told me to cook it. So it's not undercooked. Uh, you know, that's the thing. The crust isn't doughy or mushy. It's in the middle, it's good. It's the edges are where it's kind of soft and, and squishy. Um, so honestly, is it as good as getting a fresh pan pizza? No, it's not. And here's where I kind of have to say the reason why I'm going to say a, a negative thing about the pizza. Yes, it tastes good. <laughs> yes, it's a good alternative to the round pizzas that you can get uh, and eat at home. But the price is $9 where I live for this versus, yeah, it's a lot of pizza, absolutely. But you could probably order from any, you know, Pizza Hut, Domino's, Papa John's. For around 9 to 10 bucks, you can get a large pizza with like two to three toppings from them. So maybe you won't have as many toppings, maybe a few less, but the pizza will be made fresh. And yeah, it's gonna be crispy around the edges. I'm actually a little sad because regular DiGiorno pizza with rising crust is actually crispy. The crust is crispy on regular DiGiorno and it's not so in their pan version, which is kind of a big letdown for me. Um, if this pizza were like say $5, maybe $6, Okay, but $9 for a pizza that doesn't give you the authentic crispiness? It's called crispy pan pizza, and it doesn't have a crispiness to it. You know, it's soggy. That's a bummer for me. That's kind of a letdown. I thought it was going to be a lot better. I thought I was going to get that, mmm, that buttery crispiness and the firmness of the dough, and it would be easy to pick up because it's crispy around the edges. I didn't get that at all. Instead, it just ended up being kind of soggy. Even though it tastes good, it's buttery, and the ingredients are delicious, for the price you're paying for it, I expect more. Especially for a homemade pizza like this, a frozen one, versus going out and buying one at a restaurant, you would expect more, and I didn't get what I was expecting for the amount of money that I paid. Therefore, the DiGiorno Supreme Crispy Pan Pizza, I give a 3.5 out of 10. It's not great, it's not bad, it's good, it's a little bit better than good, because normal frozen pizzas aren't that as good as this one, but, and plus, look at how much food you get, like, over, like around, around two pounds of pizza, but, I gotta be honest, it's disappointing, and I honestly, I kind of wish now what I should do is like, if I'm gonna heat this up, instead of putting it in the microwave, which is gonna make it even mushier, what I may do is get, say, a little baking sheet and put it in the oven for, say, 10, 15 minutes to warm up, and maybe that will make the edges more crispy, because baking it in this pan, which is not a pan, it's just cardboard, did not make it crispy at all, and that's a disappointment. 3.5 out of 5 for the DiGiorno Crispy Pan Pizza. Thank you for watching this extra long episode of DSP Tries It, folks. I hope you liked it. I'll see you next time. Peace out.